Gigabyte sent over this motherboard for me to show you, and it's an interesting one because it's actually affordable, which is not something we see too often these days in the PC market. It's the Gigabyte B550 Eagle Wi-Fi 6. It's built around the AM4 socket and the B550 chipset with support for AMD Ryzen 3000, 4000, and 5000 series desktop processors. And yes, AM4 CPUs are still around, and they offer a lot of value in terms of price to performance, making them a great option for system builders on a budget. What sets this board apart from other B550 options is that addition of Wi-Fi 6. It means you should be able to build a decent system without having to worry about limited network speeds. All right, let's get the unboxing out of the way so we can start looking at the board. The first thing we have here is the Wi-Fi antenna, and you're gonna wanna connect that to take advantage of the Wi-Fi 6 on here. This is the IO shield for the back of your case. Some higher end boards have these built in, but it's common to have them separate like this on more budget oriented boards. There's two SATA cables in this package. Looks like one has a 90 degree connector and the other one's just straight. This is a little tiny screw for securing your M.2 drives. These are little rubber pads to support your M.2 drives and there's two different sizes in there. And then there's just some paperwork in here, including an installation guide if you need some help getting set up. And here's the board. It's part of Gigabyte's Eagle series, which sits towards the bottom of the product stack where you're not gonna find a lot of extra features like RGB and stuff like that. The board keeps things simple with a subtle black and gray color scheme with some graphics on the PCB and heat sinks. You won't find any built-in RGB lighting, and that can be a good or bad thing depending on your preference, but it does have a few RGB and ARGB headers so you can connect supported devices and have some control over the lighting that way, and we'll take a closer look at that in just a minute. We have a single ATX 12 volt 8 pin power connector on here. That's critical to make sure all your components are getting the power they need to run properly and maintain overall system stability. It's running a parallel power design in a 5 plus 5 plus 3 configuration for a total of 10 V-Core and 3 SOC phases. The VRM hardware is sitting under these heat sinks, and there is some thermal interface material between the contact surfaces to improve heat transfer and keep things running as cool as possible. These aren't the biggest heat sinks you're going to find on a motherboard these days, but they should be adequate for the type of VRM on this board. And that smaller profile, the smaller footprint for those heat sinks, means there's more space around the AM4 socket, so when you're installing your CPU, mounting your CPU cooler and all that sort of stuff, you shouldn't be getting into any tight or restrictive spaces, which is a good thing. This board has four DDR4 DIMM slots with a maximum capacity of 128 gigabytes of ECC and non-ECC unbuffered memory at speeds up to DDR4 3200 mega transfers, and that expands up to 4733 mega transfers OC. If you head over to Gigabyte's website, you can download the qualified vendor list to help pick supported RAM modules that are certified to work with this board. A lot of people like to skip this step, but I always recommend checking QVL lists when you're picking PC parts just to make sure you don't run into any compatibility or stability issues. It's a really quick check, doesn't take long to do, and it can save a lot of headaches down the line. This board has two M.2 slots, the top one up here above the main PCIe slot sitting under this heatsink here, and the other one's down here and it doesn't have a heatsink or a cooling system built in. They can both support up to 22110 type PCIe storage devices. If you're using a standard Ryzen 3000 or 5000 series CPU, M.2 slot number one supports PCIe 4.0 times 4 mode, but that drops down to PCIe 3.0 times 4 if you have a Ryzen 3, 4, or 5000 G series processor. Slot number two supports PCIe 3.0 times 4, and it's routed through the B550 chipset, whereas slot number one's connected directly to the CPU. Gigabyte also threw in four SATA 6 gigabits per second ports. So that gives you the option to add up to six storage devices to your system if you use all the SATA and M.2 connectors together. There's five PCIe expansion slots. Slot number one's the main slot. It's equipped with Gigabyte's ultra durable stainless steel reinforcement to support heavy graphics cards. The performance of this slot varies depending on which CPU you use, just like the M.2 slots. With Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series CPUs, it supports PCIe 4.0x16, and that drops down to PCIe 3.0x16 if you're using a G series Ryzen processor. And it's routed directly to the CPU, so for maximum performance, that's where you're going to want to install your graphics card on this board. There's also four full length PCIe x1 slots running through the B550 chipset one here, 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 and here. These are all PCIe 3.0. There's four internal USB headers, two USB 2.0 headers here one USB 3.2 Gen 1 header here, and one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C header here. And there's a trusted platform module or TPM header right here as well. Audio components are in the typical spot in the bottom left corner. It's equipped with a Realtek high definition audio codec supporting up to 7.1 surround sound. There's a total of five fan headers on this board and they're a little spread out. The CPU fan and CPU optional connectors are up here in the typical spot. 
And then we have system fan number one over here by the ATX power connector, system fan number two over here in the middle of the board, and system fan number three down here along the bottom edge next to the TPM header. There's a four pin RGB header and a three pin ARGB header up here, and another set of those down here, bringing the total up to four. You can plug in any compatible lighting devices into those and then use Gigabyte's RGB fusion software to get everything synced up and configured. The back panel does not have a pre-installed IO shield, so remember to install that in your case before you mount the motherboard. It comes equipped with four USB 2.0 ports, Wi-Fi antenna connectors for the Wi-Fi 6, an HDMI 2.3 port, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port, a BIOS QFlash Plus button, a 1 gigabits per second Ethernet port, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and the audio connectors. So that's a total of eight USB ports on the back panel, plus you've got those four internal headers as well. For a budget board, I actually think that's pretty good. If you're using a case that can take advantage of the internal connectors, then you can end up with a system with a pretty decent number of USB ports. Overall, this B550 series AM4 motherboard from Gigabyte looks like a nice option for budget-conscious system builders. It's got that Wi-Fi 6 support, a decent amount of storage capacity, and gives you the option to add some lighting to your system if you want. The full list of specs and details is down in the description of this video along with some purchasing links. Make sure you check that stuff out if you're interested. Give the video a thumbs up, get subscribed on your way out, and we'll see you soon.